Hello, this is Raoul Bernard with a story. And this particular story will have questions. And it is focusing on English as a second language learners. So this particular um, video is for those who are focusing on English a second language learners. The story is William. And as I said, I'm going slow as I can. <laughs> and I will have questions for you. So let us start. Until now, William had taken no interest in his handkerchiefs as toilet accessories. Now, the word is handkerchief, which is H for Harry, A for Apple, N for November, D for Delta, K for Kilo, E for Edward, R for Roger, C for Charlie, H for Hotel, I for India, E for echo, F for foxtrot, S for sugar, handkerchief. So, let me start again. Until now, William had taken no interest in his handkerchiefs as toilet accessories. They were greyish. They used to be white at one point, but they were now greyish squares, useful for blotting ink or carrying frogs or making lifelike rats to divert the long hours of afternoon school. But otherwise, he had had no pride or interest in them. But, but, last week, yes, what happened? Well, last week, Ginger, a member of the circle known to themselves as the outlaws of which William was the leader, mm -hmm, Ginger had received a handkerchief as a birthday present from an aunt in London. William on hearing the news, had jeered. But the sight of the handkerchief had silenced him. It was a large handkerchief, larger than William had conceived it possible for handkerchiefs to be. It was made of silk, and it contained all the colours of the rainbow. Round the edge, green dragons sported upon a red ground. Ginger displayed it at first depreciatingly fully prepared for scorn and merriment. And for some moments, the fate of the handkerchief hung in the balance. But there was something about the handkerchief that impressed them. Hmm, kind of funny, said Henry critically. Jolly big, isn't it? said Douglas uncertainly. It's more like a sheet, said William, wavering between scorn and admiration. Ginger was relieved. At any rate, they had taken it seriously. 
They had not wept tears of mirth over it. That afternoon, he drew it out of his pocket with a flourish and airily wiped his nose with it. The next morning, Henry appeared with a handkerchief almost exactly like it. And the day after that, Douglas had one. William felt his prestige lowered. He, the born leader, was the only one of the select circle who did not possess a coloured silk handkerchief. That evening, he approached his mother. I don't think white ones is much use, he said. Don't scrape your feet on the carpet, William, said his mother placidly. I thought white ones were the only tame kind. Not that I think your father will let you have any more. You know what he said when they got all over the floor and bit his finger. I, 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 I'm not talking about rats, said William. I'm talking about handkerchiefs. Oh, handkerchiefs. White ones are far the best. They launder properly. They come out a good colour. At least yours don't, but that's because you get them so black. But there's nothing better than white linen. Personally, said William with a judicial air, I think silk's better than linen. And white is so tiring to look at. I think a kind of colours better for your eyes. My eyes do ache a bit sometimes. I think it's probably we keep in looking at white handkerchiefs. Don't be silly, William. I'm not going to buy you silk handkerchiefs to get covered with mud and ink and coal as yours do. Mrs Brown calmly cut off her darning wool as she spoke and took another sock from the pile by her chair. William sighed. Oh, I wouldn't do those things with a silk one, he said earnestly. It's only because they're cotton ones I do those things. Linnell, corrected Mrs Brown. Linen and cotton's the same, said William. It's not silk. I just want a silk one with colours and so on. That's all. That's all I want. It's not much. Just a silk handkerchief with colours, surely. I'm not going to buy you another thing, William, said Mrs Brown firmly. I had to get you a new suit and new collars only last month. And your overcoat's dreadful because you will crawl through the ditch in it. 
William resented this cowardly change of attack. I'm not talking about suits and collars and overcoats and so on," he said. "I'm talking about handkerchiefs. I simply ask you if, if you want a silk handkerchief, William," said Mrs. Brown decisively. "You'll have to buy one." Well," said William, aghast at the unfairness of the remark. "Well, just fancy you saying that to me when you know I've not got any money, when you know I'm not even going to have any money for years and years and years." You shouldn't have broken the landing window," said Mrs. Brown. William was pained and disappointed. He had no illusions about his father and elder brother, but he had expected more feeling and sympathy from his mother. Determinedly, but not very hopeful, he went to his father, who was reading a newspaper in the library.、Um, "You know, father," said William confidently, taking his seat upon the newspaper rack. "I, I think white ones is all right for children, and so on." What I mean to say is that when you get older, coloured ones is better. Really," said his father politely. "Yes," said William, encouraged. "They wouldn't show dirt so either, not like white ones do, and they're bigger too. They'd be cheaper in the end." They wouldn't cost so much for laundry and so on. Exactly," murmured his father, turning over to the next page. "Well," said William boldly, "if you'd very kindly buy me some, or, or one would do, or I could buy them, or it, if you could just give me." As I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about," said his father. "I don't see how I can. Would you be so very kind as to remove yourself from the newspaper rack for a minute and let me get the evening paper? I'm so sorry to trouble you. Thank you very much. Handkerchiefs." Said William impatiently, "I keep telling you, it's handkerchiefs. I just want a nice silk-coloured one, 'cause I think it would last longer and be cheaper in the wash. That's all. I think the ones I have make such a lot of trouble for the laundry. Okay, all right." I shall stop there. Now, I have some questions. Questions. You can listen, re-listen to the story, and I would like you to see if you can find answers to the following questions. Question: Who is Ginger? So, try and find out who is Ginger. Now, William wants a handkerchief, but what type of material does he want? What type of material does he want the handkerchief to be?
That's question two. Question three. William and his friends, they have a group. What's the name of the group? What is the name of the group? You might have to go right back to the beginning of the story. What is the name of the group, the children's group? What is the name? What or who? Yeah. Who is the leader of the group? See if you can find out who is the leader of the group. During the story, it was said that Mrs. Brown cut off her darning wool. Yeah, I repeat that. Mrs. Brown, she cut off her darning wool. My question is, what was Mrs. Brown doing? What was Mrs. Brown, who is William's mother, what was she actually doing when it says she cut off a darning wool? Mm -hmm. Another question. Mrs. Brown doesn't like the word cotton and William keeps saying cotton and she corrects him what is the word what is the word that mrs brown uses she doesn't say cotton she likes to use another word what is that word next question what did william break yes They said you shouldn't have broken something. So Mrs. Brown said you shouldn't have broken. What exactly did William break? See if you can find the answer when you're listening or re-listening to the story. And maybe I'll give you one last question. And that is, uh, father, William's father said, I'm sorry, to trouble you. Thank you so much. That's what the father says. I'm sorry to trouble you. Thank you so much. My question is, is the father sorry? What do you understand when the father says, I'm so sorry to trouble you? What do you understand when the father says, I'm so sorry? to trouble you. Okay, those are questions. I will try my best to maybe write them in the, where should I write them? I write them maybe in the um, the comments or the description. Yep. Um, but hopefully you should be able to understand the question from this video. So, see how you get along and I will come back with the continuation of the story about William. And by the way, please subscribe to the channel and please share the videos. So please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, please, I need subscribers. And please share the videos. So I will be back with a continuation of the story of William. I look forward to seeing you then. See you in the next video. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye. See you in the next video. Bye.